Uh, I'm Gao Huang from Kaunan University. The paper I'm presenting is densely connected convolutional networks, and uh, this paper was jointly done with uh, John Liu, Lawrence Van der Martin, and Kenneth Weinberger. We are fortunate to win the Best Paper Award this year. Uh, so this paper is on architectural design for convolutional networks. So Convolet was proposed about 30 years ago, and uh, there are many changes being made to the architecture, which makes it uh, more and more powerful. And uh, two years ago, the deep, um, the basic architecture almost remained unchanged. Like as shown in this picture, each layer receives input from its previous layer and generates features for the layer right after it. Uh, two years ago, the deep residual network was proposed. So it introduces the identity connections to bypass signals across layers, and this greatly promotes grading propagation in the network. And the resident has uh, achieved uh, unprecedented well results on many challenging computation tasks. Uh, in this paper, we propose a new connectivity pattern, which is called dense connectivity. The idea is quite simple. In this network, we connect every two layers in the network. So each layer receives signals from all its preceding layers, and uh, this in, this precede, uh, the input is combined by channel-wise concatenation, which I will talk about uh, in detail later. And uh, in this network, as each layer has direct access to its preceding layers, so there's low information bottleneck in the network. So actually, we can make each layer much thinner and uh, obtaining a much compact model. Uh, this gives um, high computational efficiency and the parameter efficiency. And each layer generates K feature maps, and we call K growth rate here, and the K is generally quite small. Now let's take a look at uh, how the features are generated and uh, used in the, in the dense net. We have the original input, x0, and we pass it through the first layer, which corresponds to a nonlinear transformation, h1, and then we obtain the feature, x1. Now we concatenate x0 and x1 and use the second layer to generate the output for layer 2. And uh, we concatenate the features obtained so far and use the third layer to obtain new features. And we keep doing this until the end of the network. And for each of the nonlinear transformations, it corresponds to a batch normalization layer followed by rectified linear units layer and a convolution layer with filter size 3 by 3. As you may have noticed, uh, as we are keeping concatenating features in the network, the input to deeper layers will become very wide, and this may introduce too much computation for deeper layers. To address this problem, we found um, using a relatively cheaper convolution with field size one by one to first reduce the dimension of the channels to 4K uh, could greatly improve the parameter efficiency and also computation efficiency. And uh, here is the full picture of a dense net. Um, as in a normal convolute, we have pooling layers or convolution layers to down perform down sampling on the feature maps, and this makes the concatenation operation unviable. So to address this problem, we simply split the network into multiple dense blocks, and uh, within each block, the feature map have the same size, so they can be easily concatenated. So you may wonder, we already have the uh, amazing dense uh, ResNet architecture, why we bother to use a lot of network architecture. So here we summarize several uh, prominent advantages of DenseNet. Uh, the first clear advantage is in a DenseNet, the error signal can be uh, easily propagated to earlier layers more directly. So this is a kind of implicit deep supervision as uh, earlier layers can get more direct supervision from the final classi classification layer. And the second advantage here is uh, dense that tend to have higher parameter and the computation efficiency. For example, in each uh, convolution layer of a normal, normal component, the number of parameters is proportional to C times C, where C is the layer width, or the number of channels produced at each layer. However, in the dense net, the number of parameters is proportional to L times K times K, where L is the layer index and the K is the growth rate. Usually, we have K much smaller than C, so 
uh, the number of parameters in each layer of dense net is usually much fewer than that in a normal component. A lot of advantage here is uh, in a dense net, the features to each layer is a concatenation of uh, features from all preceding layers, and these tend to be more diversified and tend to have richer patterns. The third advantage uh, is um, dense net maintains low complexity features across the network. So in a standard component, the final classifier is built on top of the last convolution layer, which produces most high level features and also most uh, complex features because it composes many nonlinear transformations. So in a dense net, the classifier depends on features from uh, with all complexity levels. And uh, it uses both complex features and also simple features. And this tends to give more smooth decision boundaries. And this uh, really gives uh, high generation performance. So this is probably explains why dense that works especially well when the training data is insufficient. Finally, let's take a look at how dense that performs in practice. We first run uh, dense on CIFAR 10 dataset, which is a classification dataset with 10 classes. So here we first train, uh, uh, here the results of ResNet. The 110 layer ResNet gets 6.4% test error on this dataset, and the uh, 1000 layer ResNet got 4.62% uh, test error. Now we train a small dense net with 100 layers and only 0.8 million parameters, we were ad able to get comparable performance as the 1,000 layer ResNet, but using about one-tenth of its number of parameters. And uh, we train a larger dense set, it gives uh, significant, significantly lower test error than previous state-of-the-art. Uh, the best results shown here is uh, the previous state-of-the-art was uh, uh, at the time we submit our paper. So, if we train the same models on the same data set, but without using data augmentation, we can see that uh, resident overfit to the training data severely. So both models get higher than 10% test error. However, then that is still able to get 5.9 and 5.2% test error without using any data augmentation. So on the CIFAR 100 data set, the trend is quite similar and the uh, um, the small dancer is able to get a comparable performance as the much larger ResNet, and the, the larger dancer gets um, state of the art performance. So, on the large scale image land classification data set, dancer is able to uh, get similar performance as a ResNet, but using uh, less than half the amount of parameters and uh, about half the amount of computation. So the, we recently trained a 264 layer dense net. It got 20.27% uh, top one error on image net. And uh, finally, I'd like to talk about a rational work built on top of dense net, which is called the multi-scale dense net. It is aimed for uh, fast inference at the test time. The network learns multi-scale features at each layer, and uh, it uses introduces dense connections at each scale. And the most importantly, it introduces multiple classifiers attached to intermediate, class, uh, intermediate features. During inference, we first pass a test image to the first classifier, and we check the confidence level, which is the max, uh, maximum softmax prediction. If the confidence is less than a uh, pre-given threshold, we evaluate the second classifier. And uh, until the class, we keep re evaluating until we get the confidence rather than the predefined threshold. And uh, for the rest of features and the rest of classifiers, we can skip the, uh, skip the computation. So during inference, we can exit easier images from earlier classifiers and only use expensive uh, classifiers to evaluate hard examples. So gives, this gives us a uh, 2.6% uh, times faster inference than resident and uh, about 1.3 times faster than than that. So um, if you're interested in using that in your project, we have uh, 
released our code and uh, models on GitHub, and uh, there are many third-party implementations. And uh, we also recently uh, wrote a technical report on how to implement Densnet in a more memory-efficient way, and uh, the technical report will be uh, on archive maybe later today. And uh, welcome to Aposta. Thank you very much. <laughs>